Hi Stampers, it's Gigi with Stamp Fanatics and I'll be ready to go in one minute. Okay, I think we're good to go. Um, I wanted to show you that we're going to be making this cute little treat box today um, with this adorable bunny. But first, before we get started, I wanted to just tell you about our new coordination sale that's going to be going on starting March 1st, only through the end of March and then it's going away forever. So what they have come out with is all kinds of framelits that coordinate with our stamps in celebration. We also had a new punch come out and we also have um, a new stamp set with a wonderful sayings on it. But these up here go along with some of our celebration items and I just wanted to show you some ideas here so that you can see, um, like on the frogs one that, um, they have now where you can have framelits that match that help cut it out and make your items more creative. We also have this one that cuts out um, some of that, let's see, where's my celebration? The Painted Seasons, um, this is one. And then we have the Pretty Lily that we've had. Let's see, that was in our first, okay, this is the one I was talking about is our Painted Season that goes and cuts this one, that's that flower right there, and cuts out some of the leaves. And we also have, let me show you the frame, this was in our first one. And these um, celebration items have been on sale. Um, with a $50 order, you can earn one of these items for free. And so the Sew Hoppy Together, this now will have framelits that will cut those out for you. And the beautiful Lily, which was in the back, that was a $100 order. But this beautiful lasting Lily, they now have framelits that, again, um, can go ahead and cut these out for you so that you can have dimension to your cards. The Cupcake one, too, that's another favorite. So while these go on, that's this Friday, March 1st, you can purchase the framelits that go with some of these celebration items. So I thought that was awesome and I wanted to share that with you. And if you're on, I jumped on at four o'clock today. Um, I had to come in a little bit earlier, but if you're there, just say hi and tell me who you are and where you're from. I love to talk with you all as we're working. And like I said, today we're gonna be making this cute little bunny box. So here's what we're gonna be using. I have our gray granite cardstock and I'm actually gonna be using a two inch piece, just a smidge under two inches. I'm cutting it. And then it's gonna be by six and a half. So let me open this up. And we're gonna to go to six and a half on that. Okay. And then I'm also gonna take my scoring tool, which is this lighter color. This only scores, the top one cuts. And we're gonna score this at two and three quarters not cut, but score. And then we're gonna go again at three and three quarters and score. And that's it for that piece. And then I'm taking another piece and we're going to cut this at one and a half by two. So let's do the one and a half by two. And we're gonna need two of these pieces. So we're gonna cut one, and we're gonna score this at a half inch. Now I'm gonna go on this side because half inch is a little too hard to do on the, the other side, but I'll flip this around now because then I wanna do this a half inch by one and a half. So I'm gonna go there. And that will give me, if you can see, two scored lines, okay? But I need a second one of that. So again, I'm gonna go at one and a half. And I'm cutting by two. And then I'm going to score on the long side, the two inch side, at one half inch. And I'm going to turn it around and do it again at one and a half. So that's right there. Okay. Now, you can either do this part or not. It's up to you. But I wanted to emboss. So I have our basket weave dynamic folder that makes that nice basket weave shape. And I'm gonna do that and run my pieces through the Big Shot using this. Now, you don't have to, you can do it plain if you want, but I did, I think I'm gonna cut this first. All right, wait a minute, I'm gonna punch. I'm using our scalloped edge punch 
then I'm going to punch both sides first. That'll help me when I go in my embossing folder. And, okay, let's bring the big shot in. And my two pieces that I've scored. And hi, Lisa. Oh, I'm glad you could join me. Um, I am a little early today, so I'm glad you're there. Thank you for sharing my videos. I um, appreciate all of you that share. Okay, let's go ahead and close that up. So I am going to run this through the Big Shot and emboss the basket weave on our box. Like I said, you don't have to. You could leave your box plain if you want and if it's easier. But I just thought it really makes a difference in your, your little box that we're making. Okay. We're going to be making this today, Lisa. I know you came on a little late, but it's this cute little bunny treat box that we're going to be making. All right, so let's get for the big shot right there. And all I'm gonna do is take my phone folder. Let me get this unpuckered a little bit. I think I shifted it. And I'm just gonna find my score lines now. It's gonna be a little more difficult because we already had scored them, but you can find them on the back easier. See like that? And then I'm just gonna go ahead and score that down. The same thing here. And if you missed any of the dimensions that I did, you know I'll have this later for you. Um, we'll play it back and you can get all the stuff that you missed. And if you didn't get to see it live, you can always still leave a comment. I always appreciate your comments. So let's go ahead and fold this down. Let's do it that way. And then we need the other side, which is right there. Okay, like I said, this makes it a little more challenging to see, but if you don't want to do the embossing, you don't have to. I just thought it was an extra step that I really, really liked. Okay, now today I'm going to be using my Tombow glue. So I'm going to take these two edges and add a little glue. And these are going to go on the sides. So we want the side bottom of our box. And you know the glue can give you a little time to shift around if you need to. And I just want to hold that a minute and let it glue. And then I'm going to come around this side and the bottom and glue the other edge. And just hold it for a minute and let it really dry. But I like that it has that little bit of wiggle room for you to get it the way you want it. So that's why we're using that. You could use your tear and tape. You do want to use some type of a stronger adhesive than snail because I've embossed it and plus we're gonna put some candy in there. So when you have something heavier, you definitely wanna use a good glue. I think that's pretty good for that side. And then we're gonna add our second side. So again, I'm gonna put a little glue. Okay, let me close that up so it doesn't dry out. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm just gonna put it up to my line like that. And then I'm gonna tuck this side in. And we'll push that down and let that be drying at the same time if we can. It's a little, there we go. So it doesn't shift too much. And we're just gonna hold that down a minute and let it really dry. And that's our box, isn't it cute? And you don't have to worry about if it has a little pucker down here because that's okay. It's it's still gonna hold your candy. Um, I've tried it already and I know I had candy in it before and I'm gonna put some candy in this one to show you. Let me just hold that a minute more because it's still a little wet. The sides dried pretty well. I don't want that to shift in, I want it all the way out. There we go. All right, I'm gonna just put that off to the side and let it dry a minute. And I'm gonna bring my trimmer back in and we're gonna take a one inch piece, now I've already cut this to one inch, and we're gonna make it by just under two, because that's how we cut our, our paper before. So you really don't use too much of this. And this is, let me show you what paper I'm using. This is our Floral Romance. This actually is the flip side of this beautiful green leaf. So this side I thought looked real Eastery and just you know cute with like little specks on it. But this paper is beautiful. It's half designer paper, and then half of it is this beautiful vellum. Put my hand behind it so you can see. And um, it's just the most beautiful romantic paper I've seen. It'll make great wedding 
paper, um, spring paper. See the great patterns on it? And then it has a wood pattern on the back. We could do something maybe with those wood crates, um, framelits that we have. Here's another beautiful vellum that you can see how fine it is. And then, um, let's see, let's get that little piece. And here's what we're gonna do. <clears throat> I'm gonna take the back and again, I'm just gonna put a little bit of the glue. And I'm going to put it on our box just up a little bit. Try to get it straight and give it a minute so it can dry. There we go. And close up my glue. Okay, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of Whisper White and we're going to stamp our little bunny. And the set I'm using today is called Best Bunny. And this is the one that has the matching punch. Um, do I have that out? Let's see. Yes. Okay, that comes as a bundle that you can save 10% and you can get this little cute punch that punches out the body shapes and the little tail and also the little hands. Um, but this little guy is the one I'm using today and he's adorable. And then I'm using for my greeting, which was on the box here that said Easter Blessings, I'm using it from the Itty Bitty Greetings. And this is um, a stamp set that has two whole stamp sets of little sayings. We're going to be using the Easter Blessing one today. Okay, so I'm taking my black memento ink because we're going to be using blend pens to color him. And when you use those, those um, you definitely want to use a memento ink. And I'm gonna color him with the, I believe it's the light one. Yes, the light smoky uh, slate. And then I'm gonna be using the dark of the petal pink. So I'm gonna do the inside of his ears first with the lighter color. And then his little tummy is gonna be that pink too. And even the tail. And then his little body I'm going to use this nice gray because I thought it went well with the um, granite that I used for the cardstock. But I wanted to keep it a little lighter, so I'm using our um, light, what was it called? Light Smoky Slate. Okay, almost done there. All right, now what I took was three different circle punches. I'm using the one and a quarter inch to cut my bunny. And he just about fits in there, so you just wanna center him. And then I did use my one and three eighths circle punch, but I realized after I looked in the catalog, that's retired, so I didn't know if people had it. So I went to the one and three eighths scallop punch that we're gonna use for today. And then I also used some of our, this is called Sparkle Glimming, Glimmer Paper. And I'm using my one and a half inch circle punch for that one. So three different punches there. And I'm, this will all still match up great so that you can see all the colors. So I'm gonna take a little bit of snail and just add my bunny to the scallop piece first. And then I'm gonna pop up because it's going on glimmer paper. I need a stronger adhesive, so I'm gonna use one of our dimensionals. And I'm gonna put that onto the glimmer paper. And that just gives this bunny a little bit of sparkle. Isn't that cute? And then I'm gonna take another dimensional and put it on the back so that I can put that on my box so it kind of pops up a little bit. And we're gonna put that right over the middle like that now i want to show you what i found i got these eggs and i don't have the bag anymore because they're in a ziploc now but they are actually an iridescent let me get a few out and show you pretty colors these are iridescent eggs and i found these in 
Walmart. <laughs> so I bought a bag of these. They actually have chocolate in the middle. Here's one that's um, kind of chipped a little bit so you can see they do have chocolate in the middle. And I was actually just going to take a scoop, if this is just for my family, and put them in the box just like this. Now, if you're going to do this for a craft fair or something else, you might want to put them in our two-inch bags so that, um, you know, they don't feel like you've handled them. But, all right, I'm going to save these for now because I don't want to put the candy in this early. And I'm going to be using this beautiful, it is petal pink. Um, let's see, let's get this side. Powder pink, sorry, powder pink shimmer. This is the most gorgeous ribbon. It's like really pliable and beautiful. And I like the shimmer that it can also do off of that um, glimmer paper. So I'm just gonna add that in there and put it through. And then we'll give it a little cut and we can cut it down more in a minute. Now, when I don't have a third hand like I need, I actually take one of our little clothespins and just close up your bag, your box, like that. And that just holds it for me while I take my twine. Now, I have the white and silver twine that I'm going to be using, and I'm going to come around and I'm going to tie it off with a bow. So let me just get some twine here. I don't quite need that much. And once I have this tied on tight, then I will go ahead and let go and take my clothespin off. And I'll just tie that in a bow. All right, let's bring it down a little bit smaller. Okay, this is starting to twirl up a bit. Let's untwirl it. There we go. And we'll just cut our little tails off a little shorter. And the same thing with these. I think I'm going to cut these down just a bit. Isn't that cute? And then we needed our saying. So I'm taking a strip of Whisper White. Let's get all this out of here. And I'm going to be using my gray granite ink and my little, little Easter Blessings stamp from the Itty Bitty Sayings. Let me smudge that. Let's do it again. There we go. And let me push this a little to get it going. There we are. Now I'm using my classic label punch that I'm going to kind of off center and put it down by this end. So you see that it's not really centered in there. And I got this tip from Angie Judah, who is my upline. And I'm just gonna put a little sticky note on there. Cut that little raggy piece off. And I'm gonna put it back in my punch. Let's see. And then I'm gonna just bring it over Let's see if this will cooperate. All right, wait a minute. I'm a little curled up here. Let me get a fresh paper. I tried to use it again, but I guess it's a one-time shot here. Okay, here we go. You'll be able to see this better. All right, now you can see where I have, how much I have on this side of the Easter, so I'm just gonna put that much more on the other side for the blessings. And then don't forget to just peel off that little piece of sticky note. But that's way you can make this the size that you really need it. I didn't need it all this long. It was probably going to be bigger than my box. So I'm going to take a few of my mini dimensionals. And just put a couple on each side. Another one there. And we'll put this across the top of our box. Let's get this out of the way. Make sure you get it straight. And there you go. Now, I added one more thing. And that is, let's see, I have my little baggie here. Um, some of our 
gingham gala adhesive back sequins and these have a sticky adhesive he's adhesive to them already and i'm just using the round i'm not using they also have a floral shape but i'm just using the round shape to put on either end of my saying let me get that a little bit in more i think it can come in a little bit there and one on the other side yeah, the clothespin tip is a great tip just because I know so many times I've struggled with trying to hold it down and do everything. And I said, oh, I just need a third hand. And then I remembered my clothespins and it's just when you have to just pinch something to hold it until you get a ribbon around it, it really does help. Let me get that up a little further. That's kind of down low. There. And that's our box. Isn't that cute? And so you can put all your candy in at first. I mean, I took mine out just because Easter's a ways off. But you can make your boxes up, just don't tie them off, and you can make them and get them ready ahead of time for your little Easter dinner. And there you go. Aren't they cute and easy to do? Um, any questions about today's project? Okay, well, this is a quick and easy project for today. Again, the stamp sets I used were the Best Bunny, and the itty bitty greetings and if you need any of these products i'd be happy if you shopped at stampfanatics.com and use my host code for february i'll have a new one up march 1st on friday for those coordination products that i told you about thanks and have a great day